Welcome to the Boom Boom Room, people. Another episode. I had to reach down in the bag, pull out my guy. Nashville's on, Tennessee's on, Kentucky's on. Ron Mercer. of many moves. He shakes, bakes, roars, and soars. But it's the spin that makes him move ahead of all the rest. Bang, man. That's, that's how you come yeah. in. That's how you come in on the show. I like that. <laughs> all right, man. So what we doing, Mercer? We just talking about your journey. You know, we want to start from the beginning, your upbringing. We'll talk about your household for a second, and then we'll move on. And we'll jump straight to middle school. You know, we know you're from Nashville. Um, the viewers, if you're listening, Ron Mercer is a Nashville legend, Tennessee legend. So this is his journey and how it got there. Take off, Mercer. Yeah. Yeah, we start, we'll start off with uh, the side of town, man. I grew up in East Nashville, um, living with my mom uh, growing up. My parents were divorced. Um... First got into sports around uh, fifth grade. Uh, wasn't that good. Uh, wasn't good at all, actually. Uh, and then uh, part of it, I moved with my father. So living with my mom, moved with my father. Once I moved with my father, it changed. Just having a, a man around every day. He had a basketball way. And that changed everything because that's all I did that summer when I moved with my father. Just, just bad. nothing but basketball. I uh, also played other sports, baseball and everything as well, too, football. Basketball was just some of my passion that I had once I had that opportunity just to practice. Uh, then middle school, I went to a school called Isaac Lick. Um, and once I got there, man, it was um, it, it was pretty cool, man. I had guys my, my height. Um, started playing in seventh grade, man, and I was already, seventh grade, I was already 6'2". So I was already from a gross first, uh, and actually had my first gun in seventh grade. So uh, once I got to the lid, so uh, we had a jamboree at that time. For the young viewers that don't know, it's called a jamboree at that time. And uh, I remember that day, which is funny. I was trying to dunk all day, couldn't dunk at all. Yeah, I was throwing my hoops, couldn't do it, hitting the back of the rim. Got it again, got a fast break, and actually dunked and did throw it. <laughs> I came back and they said, man, you dunk it. And I said, for real, because I really didn't know, because everything just got quiet. So that was my first dunk in the seventh grade. It was the craziest thing. Could have dunked all day until I got into the first jamboree game. Seventh grade, no cameras around or anything. You ain't, you ain't got the people no. standing by, hey, man, feel me dunking, feel me dunking. It just happened. Yeah, we would have been wasting film that day, <laughs> early that day. Hey, that's what's up. So you going in the lit. Talk about some of your influences and when you fell in love with the sport. I know you just said your pops when you moved to him, uh, basketball kind of took over. 
did that always did that always overshadow you in baseball and whatever it may be because of your height or how'd you adjust to that? Nah, really, I was pretty much even in all sports. Uh, that's the crazy thing. I, I was pretty much even with that. The problem with the thing with basketball is in my neighborhood. Guys allowed me to play with older guys because I was always tall. Right. So they gave me a little bit of an advantage of playing against older guys. So by the time I got to middle school, I'm already I'm used to it. So guys my age, I'm thinking yeah, that ain't nothing. I'm playing against guys already, seniors in high school. So it wasn't really a big jump for me. I, it's just something I was used to. But I think my guys from from the neighborhood, man, because they really. They really, really challenged me in that way, but because I'm tall, once again, man, that, that allowed me to, you know, get into some games that probably shouldn't have been there. Right. You know, right. it worked out. So, did you always, did you always come about playing guard, or was you because of your height when you thrown down low in the basketball? How did you? Because you played guard. They all on the box. They always threw me on the box, man, and that's the thing about it. Even in high school, in the beginning part, they threw me on the box, uh, but. AU ball allowed me to, to play a little bit on the wing because I realized outside of Nashville, this guy's way taller than me. They 6'9", 6'10". I hadn't really seen that, you know, around my neighborhood like that besides older guys. So initially I was a post, but I had to work hard in the summer to try to develop that skill. And then seeing other guys around my neighborhood, man, just to seeing people dribble, handling the ball, I'm like, you know what? That's what I need to work on. You know, I've actually seen a guy... Uh, they used to come to my neighborhood, Mingo Johnson. Man, I seen how he would handle the ball. Yeah. And I'm thinking, man, that's amazing. I ain't seen anybody who can shoot and handle the ball. So I just started practicing. And I'm like, you know what? I know I'm way taller, but it don't mean I can't do it. So let me practice. You need some of that yoga. Yeah. Right. Okay. So how did you how did you transition from Litton? Because after that, did you have success mm -hmm. when you went to Litton right away? You know, I know you were tall. You got you said you were in some games that Maybe you shouldn't have been in because of your height, but you were in those games. So what was what was your success like? Was you immediate success? You know, you had to dunk, you know. Did it did, did that did that snowfall, I mean uh, uh uh snowball into other things as far as now Mercer scoring 10 points, scoring 15 points. Look at it, we got 20. How was that? How was that your first your first year playing yeah, real basketball? And it was just a gradual step of, of keep going up. As the season got on, I got a lot better, you know. Uh, um, that year, my seventh grade year, we ended up winning the city at the time. So that that was pretty cool. But then I started getting more dunks at the end of the season. Uh, the strange thing that happened is when we had AU trials, I want to say it was either before my seventh grade year or after. AU trials, I meet this guy named Drew Maddox. Mm -hmm. The guy ended up playing, playing at Vanderbilt. We ended up playing uh, at Good Packs together. But how that came about was Drew told me, he said, uh, man, the school I go to is kindergarten through 12. And he said, man, they will let you play on varsity in the eighth grade. I said, man, I said, you lying. He said, yeah. He said, I'm going to be a, a freshman and I'm going to play on varsity. So I went home to my parents and they probably thought I was crazy at the time. I said, listen, I don't want to play middle school ball no more. I want to go play over this school over here. They let me play varsity. Yeah. And we worked it out, and I actually, they let me do it. So my eighth grade year, I transferred a good pass my eighth grade year, and then I played on Boston. So they let me do it, you know. So now you're over, they work. So now you're over the good pass. I take you out of the public school element, put you in a private school mm -hmm. where it's conducive to you, most definitely. Mm -hmm. you, get to, you get to play upper grade, you know what I mean, and with the big boys. You now, you now go from playing with your peers to playing with – Against 17, 18 year olds, and really get to test their talent. Right. Tell me what that experience was like because I'm gonna touch on something after you tell. Because I know, first of all, you viewers, we're in the boom boom room, it's uncut, unfiltered. This is a very, very humble person, y'all. So I feel it's my duty to be <laughs> the one to shower him with the praise. You know what I mean? Since we got him on here, I'm gonna shower with the praise and I'm gonna see if you're gonna say something. And if you don't, yeah. I'm bringing it into effect. So you tell me how that was, you you finally being in eighth grade and you getting to play up on the next level. Uh, it started off slow uh, because it's, it's something uh, in the structure. That structure was a little different. Uh, the coach that I had at the time actually played for Vanderbilt. So right off, I started getting, instead of having that raw talent, 
I was able to mix in a lot of fundamentals that I didn't have. Mm -hmm. So that helped progress my game a lot faster than a normal eighth grader would have right. on top of the talent that I had. So that helped out a lot. Plus, playing in my neighborhood against grown men anyway, now mm -hmm. when I'm playing against these kids, I don't have any fear because I'm like, the guys in my neighborhood is way tougher than these guys I'm getting ready to play. And yeah. I know I ain't going to get shot or beat up after. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Playing yeah. on the hardcore. So it, it's totally different. So I was prepared for that part, but it was a gradual, uh, it was very gradual in the beginning. But as the season got on, started getting better. Um, and I just made my adjustments, you know, made my adjustments. At this point now, seventh grade, I'm 6'2", eighth grade, I'm 6'5". Mm. So it's, it's a little bit different, and I'm playing center. Right. So and, ooh. And, and for some of these kids that, that they think that if you start, that's, if that's important to you or not. Well, my eighth grade year, I didn't start. But I was the second leading scorer on the team, but I did not start. So, so a lot of people didn't know that. So everybody think that you have to start. It's not about how you start. It's about how you finish. Most definitely. You win in that game. So that's just for some of the kids who worried about, okay, I didn't start this year. I should, hey, you ain't got to start. Yeah. But you can finish. You can finish. <laughs> so. Exactly. And I think, I think a, lot of, I like, a lot of kids, I know they'll be watching this. Um, I know they think of that as a cliche phrase. You know what I mean? It's not how you start. It's how you finish. But. It's, it's actually true. You know what I'm saying? Like, here's a guy like you that started from there in the 6th, 5, and 8th grade. But like you said, at the end, you started. And at the end of that season, you were selected to the All-City team as an 8th grade. Mm -hmm. Like, that yeah. is – that's I, I, that's phenomenal. <laughs> that's, that's phenomenal, man. Like, because that not only were you with your peers, yeah. and I'm going to let you take over, but – this is the total landscape of the city, and the city is bubbling with talent. Right. You know what I mean? It's top 10 teams in the city, mm -hmm. you know, nationwide. Right. So uh, talk about that, man. Did, did you – Did you? was it a, a conscious effort to make it to that list, or were you just working? Talk about that for a second. At that time, man, I didn't even know there was a list. Right. You know, I didn't, I didn't know anything about it until they showed me the paper. My thing is you go out and you play hard. You play for the passion of the game. And good things will happen. So going into that season, I just wanted to play. I just wanted to ball. Mm -hmm. uh, but when the list finally came out and I seen it, I was the only eighth grader. They had uh, Drew Max was a freshman. Mm -hmm. And they had one sophomore, Milcar Butler, I think. Milcar. I mean, not sophomore, junior. He was a junior. And the rest were seniors. Right. But everybody on that list was seniors. Mingo, David Vaughn. Shout out to David mm -hmm. Vaughn. Vaughn Sims. Uh, yeah, Sims. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Wade. Yep. Uh, so it was a nice list, man. But just to be on that list, even if I was a a freshman or a sophomore, I would have been happy. But to make it in the eighth grade, it was pretty cool. Right. It was pretty cool. And I think that's something that, that, that shouldn't be overlooked, man. Especially, you know, uh, after your playing career, like, it's a lot of stuff that gets lost because, you know, it wasn't media coverage like it is now. And a lot of people, right. especially these young kids, you know, um, don't get to know who they're around or the resources they're able to tap, tap into. I, I remember personally, man, I remember uh, playing um, in the um, when the summer league was here, the program, and I was in college, I was in UT, and I remember you coming to a game, and I'm sitting there like, oh, mercy in the house, man. I got to go off, you know what I mean? Just, you know what I mean? Just because the aura that was in the building, you know what I mean? You coming through, you are a pro at this time, like, you ain't got to be there, you know what I mean? But you come in there, showing your face in the city, you know what I mean, to some good that's bubbling. And I just know, man, when people walk in like that, your name can be stamped. You might not never get to see me play again, you know what I mean, personally, yeah. you know what I mean, because you pro. But yeah. you always want to leave a, 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 a mark, man, on people. So kids, man, when you when you get the opportunity to play in front of others, I ain't saying show out or nothing like right. that or go outside yourself, but go as hard yeah. as possible and treat every game like it's your last, you know what I mean, because – you never know who's watching. So Yeah, you have to. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. Yeah, you never that's the thing about it, man. They always say, like, when you're in the gym or when you're working out, you never know who's around, you never watch them. Could be a, a, a college coach, it could be a friend of a college coach. You you just never know. Or you could fit the eye of one particular coach. Exactly. You know what I mean? You might not be the best player, but 
you know, that coach, you might be perfect for that team. So anytime you got the opportunity to play and work out, hey, go hard. Yeah. Whether you shoot or not, go hard because it could be rebound. It could be defense. It could be something that somebody else is looking for that you don't think that's important that's very important. Most definitely. So mm-hmm. not to, not to um, date us, you know what I mean? I'm going to throw us in there, you know what I mean? But give us the year that you, your, your eighth grade year, what was this, 94, 93, 92? I don't know. Uh, I think it's ninety one. Somewhere around there. So, yeah. Yeah, somewhere around there. So you look, you go there, and one thing that I was always impressed with, Mercy, you were always polished, like skill wise. And now I know I never knew the background that I didn't. I didn't know y'all had a Vanderbilt coach as y'all coach at the time. You know what I mean? And he was. Yeah. I guess he was big on skill, skill training, and polishing your skills, and everybody handled yeah, it. He- Post guy at Vanderbilt. So when it came to uh, the fundamentals, jump hook, drop step, all of that stuff that I really didn't have, right. he polished that up for me with the raw talent and everything else that I had. So uh, just in one year, my skill level had went up just from knowing the basics, right. fundamentals. Right. Right. You know, from a college coach. Yeah. You know, regardless of you know where he went after that, he played in college. So, so you you went uh, you went through the basics before. Oh, yeah. Mercer out there on the wing, crossing over, going between the leagues and all this. You had a foundation built. Yeah, yeah, yeah it wasn't no crossing between the legs then. <laughs> Everything was uh, shot fake, yeah. hold the follow through. Yeah. It yeah. was very technical on everything that we were doing at that time. The stuff that wasn't cool, mm-hmm. and I didn't think that was cool, but now I look at it and was like, I'm glad I did. It doesn't matter how it looks. There you go. You know what I mean? You get the knowledge of it and you have to go through it. It's not about how cool it looks, you know? Yeah. So we're going from now. Now you have the you got the you got the target in a sense on your back. Drew's having success, you have a success. Um, the name Good Pastor is echoing through the city. Man, y'all need to get over there and see them, this, that, and the other, you know, and what was that like? That 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 in a sense that fame that came with it. You know what I mean? How did you handle that? Did you keep your head down, keep working? With with it being you being in a private school, it's kind of isolated in a sense, you know what I mean? You're yeah. kind of guarded from a yeah. lot of things. How'd you handle that? Uh, man, you know what? It, it, was, it was a lot of components to that. The, the the attention from it was good, but a lot of the schools that we played on the road, these uh, um, country towns, man, it, it, it wasn't probably as fun. You know what I mean? You, you had a lot going on at that time that um, – it, it wasn't as fun, but the basketball part, man, just kind of take your mind away from a lot of the negative stuff that was going on when it came to some of those trips. But the attention part, man, was was cool. I'm glad I had Drew Maddox with me to go along with that ride because to do it by myself, I don't know how I would be able to handle it. Yeah. But with Drew yeah. and that, we're both getting that attention, you know, because we were basically connected together, double, mm-hmm. double M, Maddox mm-hmm. and Mercer. So we was getting that attention together, and then at some point, uh, mine took off in a whole different direction and started going national attention with it, and we kind of went from there. But I'm glad I had that partner with me uh, through that ride, so it was pretty cool. So you transitioned to your freshman year. What was the uh, expectations of your team going into it? Well, how'd y'all finish? Matter of fact, before we go into it, I, I, mean, if you I don't. I don't. I, I really don't remember what the record was mm-hmm. uh, because we're a young team. Uh, with Drew being a leading scorer, being a freshman, and I was the second leading scorer being eighth grade, right. you can tell we really wasn't that, that good. But uh, freshman, sophomore, junior year, things started to pick up. So yeah. started getting a little bit more attention and started moving away from the city, going to different tournaments uh, outside of Nashville. So Okay. Yeah. So you get ready to take off from there. As far as camps go, going into the summer, let's go after your freshman year. You know what I mean? Leading yeah. to your sophomore year. When did the notoriety come? Did you go to ABCD camp, Five Star camp, Nike camp? What was, tell me what that experience was like. So my experience during that time, AU basketball and then the Nike camps. Mm-hmm. So uh, the Nike camps was probably the biggest thing because we had – and someone actually sent it to me uh, a couple of months back. So it's, it's a video floating around with me, KG – Allen Iverson, a lot of those guys, we were all at the same camp. Yeah. So everybody yeah. got noticed at that time, like, okay, this kid from Nashville can play. Right. You know, and then I get a chance to see other guys my height who can run, jump just like I can. So 
that's when I noticed, you know what, I got to I gotta take this thing up another notch because these guys can play outside of Tennessee. So, um, And then there was other Nike camps as well after that where you just start getting invited. You know, go to one camp, you get invited to the next camp, top 40 camp. Right. So uh, that's where the notoriety nationally came from, the Nike camps. And you yeah, handled that. And you handled that going back into school. Um, yeah. Coming back into your, your, I think it was the sophomore year. Tell me, tell me what that was like. Because at this point now, you you on the big boy radar, man. This ain't no state. This is national. You know what I mean? You are on the big boy radar. You got guys gunning for you night in and night out. Like you said, going to these little country towns. They really just they homecoming. When y'all come to town, yeah. you know what I mean? Eminem, oh, oh, yeah. oh, this is it right here. So what what was that like, man? What, what, the, the following, um, the expectations that you guys had. Um, tell me a little bit a little bit about that. Man, it was fun, man. You know, it, the gym went from being kind of packed to now standing room only, yeah. especially at home and on the road. Right. You know, it was a big going from that freshman to, to sophomore year. Now you got all the gyms packed. Everybody want to see uh, if this guy can play, if it's true, you know, can he play? And, uh, man, it was fun. Like I said, it, it, it was it was a fun time to play basketball, show your skills, and be tested at the same time because, you know, playing on the road, man, is not tough, especially in some of these places, man. Small places, they got the whole city there, and they're on top of it. Yes, they are. They're on top of it. And you hear all kind of names, and, yeah. you, you know, you get it all. Yeah. So it kind of tests you. As a as a teenager at that point, okay, can I handle this? Yeah, I can handle this. Right. You know, you got to keep going through it, and right. uh, and it just taught me a lesson. You know what? It's going to be uh, it's going to be more times like this. So you just got to get used to it. Yeah, that's, that's that's a special time, man. That's um. So how do you get on the radar? As far well, not how you get on the radar because you're on the radar. How did you come up with the decision and who weighed in? Who your influencers? Um, as far as getting ready to go to Oak Hill. Well, the Oak Hill thing, so going back to my sophomore year, mm. I was starting to be rated as the top player in my class, my um, sophomore and junior year. Right. We go to Nike right. camp. I meet Coach Smith. I actually end up playing on Coach Smith's team, me and KG. Really? Uh, yeah, we played on the same team with Coach Smith. Mm. So I started hearing more about Oak Hill, started seeing the players there, knew about Stackhouse, some of the other great players that – that was there before me, mm -hmm. and it got to a point locally um, in Nashville where I felt like the competition is not where it needs to be for me right. as an individual. Right. Uh, that was the right. biggest thing for me, and I, when I tell people, I said, if you go and look at my history, that's exactly what my history shows. When I was in middle school, when I felt like the competition is not where it wants to be, put me where I can play against somebody that's, you know, right. put me against way better players, and let's see how I do. Right. This was the same transition from Good Pasture to Oak Hill. It's like, you know what? I want to go here and play the best. I want to play against the junior college guys. I want to play the national schedule that Oak Hill has. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of a thing then because if you look at the history, KG, um, at the time, he was living in South Carolina. He went to Chicago to play. Right. So, a lot of other guys, you know, were switching schools to kind of get, you know, better recognition or whatever their reason, you know, for that. I don't know KG's reason, but, you know, I know he ended up leaving. I ended up leaving. Right. Other people right. ended up going to different schools, man. It just became a competitive where you want to play the best in the world. If you want to get better, you have to play the best. You got to test yourself. So that's basically what the Oak Hill thing really, really came about with me is I wanted another challenge. Okay. So you get this challenge. You're accepted in the Oak Hill. Um, going out when you're coming in, you got um, Jeff McGinnis, Touche. You got him leaving out. You got Stackhouse leaving out. Um, the All-American list is building up. They might have a championship or two by that time. But Coach Smith's, his, le his legacy is growing. Um, you added to that greatly. Um, and he talked about you. Um, a lot, you know what I mean, when I was up there, because I always ask questions, man, you know what I mean, because I wanted, I wanted to follow in the footsteps and figure out, man, we got to be better than them, you know what I mean, it's competitive, as always, so um, getting there, when you get to Oak Hill, was it a culture shock, was it, well, you know, you, you've been plucked out of the city, you're going to Oak Hill, and what a lot of people don't know, you went to Oak Hill as a junior. No, senior. As a senior. 
for my senior year. Oh, yeah, yeah, I only went one year. Okay. I only went one year. So yeah. you, so you, mm-hmm. are, you are already all American when you go into Oak Hill. Yeah. You're parade all American going into Oak Hill. So now you get to Oak Hill, you got to follow that up. You know what I mean? Yeah. The expectations are very high. I know, for uh, speaking for myself, when you walk in there, you can feel the aura in the gym. You, it's something special need to happen here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Tell me what it was like adjusting from going from Good Pastor to Oak Hill and playing a different type of competition. Man, it was shocking. It was definitely shocking because once you get out the high, off the highway, you know, it's you got 25, 30 miles in the mountains and you even got to travel to. <laughs> man, where are we going? And uh, when you finally get on campus, man, you can feel it from the basketball standpoint. Like you said, when you walk in the gym, you can feel it. Um, just the school life is, is different, you know. It's different, but the focus of uh, getting the academics and the focus to have the access to the gym 24 hours a day is amazing. That's different. So, you know, in the beginning, I was like homesick for the first month. I'm like, man, it's, no, it's nothing to do. You go to class, you go back to your dorm where the ball players play at. That's it. Right. That's all you got. And then when you get bored, it's like, man, let's go to the gym. Let's go lift weights. Let's go play. Let's go one on one. That was probably the best thing for me because. If I was a senior back home, I would have been out in the streets. I would have been out here doing this and that. At Oak Hill, you have no choice but to get your homework done mm-hmm. and play ball or practice ball. Right. So uh, that was the best thing for me, and that took my game to a whole nother level at that point. You know, once I had access to the gym, you know, back right. home, I only had access to outdoor courts. Mm-hmm. So I played on courts most of my time, uh, you know, back home. So. Having the gym, I was in, I was in basketball heaven. Yeah, I, and I, I, I can, I can, I can set up the same sentiments, man. It's different when you get to wake up and you bored, and your yeah. only option is, okay, you bored, study or go to the gym. Like it ain't no if ands or buts about it. You yeah, can't do nothing but get better. So yeah. talking about the competition that was with you on that team, I know most definitely you were the guy. You were all American as a junior coming oh. in. Talk about the guys that were with you and how you all pushed each other. Um, um, mm-hmm. In the preseason, you know, I mean, establishing a pecking order, establishing yeah. Coach Smith, establishing his fingerprint on the team. Talk about it, a yeah. little bit of that. Man, it was uh, it was great for me, man, because not only basketball uh, wise, socially wise, it was good. Because see, we had we had guys from New York, we had guys from North Carolina, uh, had a Spanish kid. Like we had a little bit of everybody, every race, everybody on our team. But our big man was 6'9 and 16. So obviously I'm happy about that because now I'm standing on the wing. Yeah, no 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 longer big man mercy. You get to be guard mercy. No. You know, 6'7 always been the tallest, but now I see these big trees. I say, okay, we we good. Now I can run off some screens. I got some big guys. I ain't got to go down in the paint too much. Mm -hmm. I love. Uh, But everybody knew their role. Everybody had a role. You know, we had a point guard and who can get to the basket. We had a guy who can control the game. Big guys, we had one guy who can rebound, one guy that can score. So our team was uh, perfectly set up for everybody knowing their role. And, uh, man, we just went out and balled, man. I enjoyed everybody. Socially-wise, socially wise, that's when I first got turned on to Craig Mac and, and, and Biggie. Because the New York guys. It changed. So, it changed the whole thing because up north music, man, like we were, I wasn't really into that unless it was the main guys, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I learned about the biggie, all that stuff there. They learned about the South from me. So um that helped out a lot social, now, which, was, which was real cool. Let's stay right there for a minute because I want people to understand um when you walk into this dorm, um it is I think it was Fletcher at the time. You walk in this dorm, you putting all these different cultures in one melting pot, man. Like you in your room sleep, somebody something to wake up playing biggie, somebody something to wake up yeah. playing go go yeah. music. Yeah. I, I, I remember me sitting there like, hey man, come on, man. Who was playing that? Like, talk about yeah. that, man. Like, like, how does that help? That camaraderie that you gotta form outside of the court. You know what I mean? Living together. How, how, how did that help to spill over onto the court? Well, it, it helped me 
it helped me once I got to college. You know, once you get to college, you're going to be room with somebody that you're not, you're probably not familiar with, especially if it's not your friend. You know, you might be familiar with, but it's not your friend with somebody you grew up with. So being that on kill, like you said, I can be in my room. I hear Biggie next door. Some of the New York guys stay up all night. You know what I mean? I can stay up all night. So they play their music early in the morning, late at night, you know, so it's, you just, just got to get used to it and respect everybody's space. But at the same time, once I got to college, it's like, okay, I'm used to this now. I got that prep ahead of time, you know. Right. So it was pretty cool, man. It, it, it definitely helped socially, you know, long term, man. And even though I hit it in the beginning, yeah. it, it, it worked out. Uh, before we get back to Oak Hill and, and the season that you had playing the national competition, traveling, um, similar to AAU, a little further at times. Um, let's talk about, let, let, let's go back a little bit. Tell me, where'd you get your mentality from, Marcel? Um, as far as, you know, I, I understand you grew up out east for the viewers. Um, out east Nashville, that's one of the roughest parts of Nashville. East Nashville, south Nashville, it, it, it's two rough parts, you know what I mean? As everybody has in, their, in the inner city, mm -hmm. everybody has rough parts, but Talk about when you got your mentality from. I understand you playing against older guys growing up, but as far as the influences, like for me, uh, I, I date back you, Dante, Hal McClain, um, uh, my mom, you know what I mean? It, I had a lot of people um, into sculpting me that I took a little piece from. Who, 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 were, who were those people for you? Uh, first off, it would probably be a combination of my mom and my dad. Right. Um, my mom is a little bit more outspoken. I'm not really outspoken unless I, unless I need to be. But other than that, I'm not. Yeah. My dad is more of an even kill no matter what. He just sit back and just sit there and just observe. That's just how he do. And, and I kind of have a little bit of both of them. Uh, Basketball-wise, man, growing up with older guys, on different parts of town, you didn't know who was what. So you just kept your mouth shut. You just watched. You know what I mean? Even when you played and somebody had to say something, man, I'm just, I just stay quiet and say, okay, I just let my play do the talking. So I'm not a, I'm not a big talker when it comes to that, man. I just say, okay, I have it in my mind that, okay, it's on now. I might not say it to you, but it's on now. You're going to feel it when it's time to play. And that's it. That's basically my mentality, man. I don't, I don't say much. Right. And I, I, I know I know that, you know, I just wanted to get that out there for the people, man. Definitely. Like, um, you know, okay, so you get to Oak Hill, y'all first after the first month, month and a half, the season kick in. And now you can get you're in your comfort zone, you know what I mean? You, you practice, y'all itching to get to play somebody, man. Yeah. What what was that like that first that first taste of competition? Man, you, you know, know what? what? It, it was uh it was, was nervous, nervous at first, first because, because Early on, we started playing junior colleges, small junior colleges. Mm -hmm. So when we seen guys just as big as we were in the beginning, we were like, but we ended up blowing them out. You know what I mean? So we started getting confidence, like, oh, this is junior college. Like, we out here destroying teams. So, uh, man, it, it was pretty exciting. And then the traveling. Once we started traveling and getting on the road, start playing some top-notch teams, we're like, okay, now we, we ready now. We ready, ready now, and we have the bigger crowds just showing up at these tournaments, tournaments that we're playing in. So now we're starting to see some real deal competition, but we're getting the best of every team because we're Oak Hill. And that's the part. We got the target on our chest now. Everybody just Oak Hill, okay, this is what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. So we got everybody's best game, man. Now, did you know that? Did you know that going into Oak Hill? Like, um, when y'all going on the road, you knew the big target was on your back? Oh, yeah, because everybody knew what, uh, what school Oak Hill was. Man. Everybody knew it. The reputation was already there. They don't, they don't lose too many games each year. You know, you'd be lucky, you know, if Oak Hill lose, you know, four or five games. You know, that's, that's just how it is each year. They're not losing over 10 games, you know, especially during that time. And they just came off of winning the national championship. So we definitely had a target on that. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. So good season. You're, you're once again um, All American. Um, back to back years. Um, before before even getting to that point, let me remind the people you were two time Mr. Basketball in yeah. the state of Tennessee before going up to Oak Hill. Right, right. Okay, so yeah, that was, I'm, I'm yeah you, that's so, uh, listen, y'all. We're in the Boom Boom Room. This is me talking. In the Boom Boom Room with Ron Slay. We're here with Ron Mercer, though. He ain't gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> it don't happen like this, people. You feel what I'm saying? It's something special. In the air, there's something around you, Merce. You know what I mean? So you 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 freshman, um, you named all city, along with some other dogs. 
Then your two-time Mr. Basketball in the state of Tennessee. Along with that Mr. Basketball comes the All-American status. Then, as a senior, you rated as the top player in your class going into getting ready to go into college. So, what was that recruiting process like? Your senior year, had you already made up your mind? What, 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 did, were you swayed one way or the other, like, mentally? Like, because I'm going to be honest, for example, speaking for me, when I got up there, all of a sudden, the way it was ran, and I finally found out basketball was bigger outside the state of Tennessee. That's the first and foremost. So yeah. when you see seeing the college coaches and stuff coming up, they're like, man, hold on, man. This is – this is a little different, you know what I mean? So I'm I'm open to other things. Like I had Arkansas on my mind, um, Tennessee, up? things like that on my mind. But when you get up there, you see other, these other coaches, and this, these are the same guys you see on TV. How was your experience with that as far as breaking man, it down? Man, uh, AU tournaments, uh, uh, no older Richardson would show up. Mike Anderson, uh, uh, his assistant at Arkansas would show up. Of course, Kentucky, Kentucky was everywhere. everywhere. Right. Tennessee was everywhere. everywhere. Uh, and basically, man, I had to narrow my choices down to Arkansas, Tennessee, and Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Now, for people that don't know, my whole family is, is Tennessee fans. <laughs> yeah. All see, people that didn't know that. Now they did. I want to trap on that. Don't touch on it. <laughs> yeah. So our whole family, man, is Tennessee. Actually, I was ready to commit to the University of Tennessee as a sophomore. Mm-hmm. Uh, freshman going to my sophomore year. I was a big Allen Houston fan. Wade, Wade Houston, Houston fan. Wade Houston was, was, was the coach at the time when they were recruiting me. Uh, but he resigned and, and, the, and the university went in a different direction. So that opened up the gate for me to say, okay, I still got Tennessee on the list, Kentucky, Arkansas. So, you know, the first day that the coaches can call you, Arkansas, Arkansas said, hey, you our guy. We want you. You know, we want you. We want you. Two or three days later, they done signed three players to play my same position. So I ain't still them off. I ain't still them off. I was hot about that because I love Arkansas. Yeah. So got them out of the way. Then we down to Tennessee and Kentucky. And Rick Pitino came to visit me. I took, actually took a visit. That's the only visit I took was Tennessee and Kentucky. Went to Kentucky. Uh, Rick Pitino told me, hey, you come here, you a star. The issue that I had at the time is I didn't believe him. Right. Not because of my skill level, like I didn't have confidence in myself. I was a big Roger Rose fan. Roger Rose was there at the time, and I knew, man, if I went there, I probably won't go start because dude was cold. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, right then, I said, man, I, I don't know if I can believe Tino you know, on this, man. I don't. He's he telling me I'm a star, but dude is nice. Yeah. I can go to Tennessee and be the man now. So, you know. know I already got some of my AU guys already on the team that mm-hmm. was there the year before. Brandon Wood coming in at the same time. Mm-hmm. I was watching, and, let me, and I'm going to get back to this, but I was watching your show with Host Club, right? Yeah. So this is connected to her, which is crazy. Okay. So in high school, she was the May Smith High School Female of the Year. I was the male of the year. Mm-hmm. So I put her in Atlanta uh, tip-off. Uh, that's when I first met her. She went to Tennessee. So it would have been, if I went to Tennessee, the top two players, male and female, would have been at the University of Tennessee, paid men in the top football. Like, like it, was, it was so much in the day. It was so much aura going around there that it would have been so nice. And y'all, and y'all, y'all, if I'm mistaken, it's a picture. It's a picture floating around with you and Shamik going right? I have it. You I, have it. Yeah, I have it. Okay. So, so at, at that, that banquet, banquet, I get back to the other thing. But at that banquet, she was the male, and I was the male. I was uh, she was the female. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. I was the male. Joe Smith was the college male, and Rebecca Lobo was the female. Wow. So it's crazy to see that connection of how that worked out in, in high school, which is crazy. Uh, and then, of course, she ended up winning the national championship. Our first year, I ended up winning the national championship. But that's the connection that we have. With, with the whole Tennessee, Tennessee that's, that's correct. Well, See, basketball, first of all, people, is a small, small, small world. Yeah. And yeah. actually, the higher up you go, the smaller it gets. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So yeah. imagine, imagine that, people. Imagine if that yeah. came around. <laughs> so get back to yeah. that. So, so back, back to that. that. So uh, it came down to uh, Kentucky, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. At the time, Kevin O'Neill was the coach. Right. Um, and when, when you, you break, break everything, everything down, down 
it's, it's hard, hard to, to turn down the tingle of what he was doing at the time. time. The system, the style of play was more catered to my game than, than Tennessee at the time. Right. And the crazy thing about it is when you look at the schedule at that time, Tennessee was only on TV when they played Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Kentucky was on TV twice a week during that time. All the time. So from a basketball standpoint, and if I have dreams of going pro and everything else, you're going to get noticed being on TV twice a week on a really good team mm-hmm. than you are on a on a decent team and being on TV maybe once or twice out of the whole year. Right. So that's basically how everything kind of broke down from there, you know, uh, with, with the college decision. So that's how it came down in, you know. The rest is history, man. It sure is. Now, I, I want to ask you something. That, um, me and Coach Smith talked a little bit about, um, I know you and KG were in the same class. Now, mm-hmm. we're, we're, it was it was very close, um, as according to Coach Smith, for KG coming to Oak Hill at the same time. Yeah. I've heard, heard that. I'm not, I'm not, not sure, sure, but I, I've heard, heard that. I heard there was a discussion about it, but I don't know how true that is. Yeah, I, 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 and I, I, that, I just think that would that would have been kind of wild, man. It would have been kind of interesting to see you and him on the same court in high school, like. <laughs> well, at, at the night camps, we played on the same team. Right. You know, like, that was only just for those couple of days or a week or whatever it was, and it actually worked out pretty good because KG can play with anybody. KG's right. so unselfish, man. He can play with anybody. He can pass. He can rebound. Mm-hmm. So, so we didn't have an issue playing uh, like on the same team. That would have been that would have been nice. I would have been, you know, that, that would have been that would have been nice playing. It would have been fun. Yeah, you know, I, I see. Would, I just would have loved to be able to get up there because I, I was I stayed at Coach Smith and Miss Smith House, man, all the time looking at the highlight tapes. You know what I mean? Like, but oh. between Stackhouse and them highlight tape, y'all highlight tape. Like I would have loved to see KG added, man. That would have been phenomenal. Like I don't. That would have been different. That would have been different to see. So we, we go on. You get ready to go to Kentucky. Mm-hmm. You pick Kentucky. You're going to Kentucky. Big Blue Nation. It, it, it's, y'all come in. And who's there when you get there besides Rose? Well, Rose, Rose ended up leaving. Okay. So when, when I, and I don't know the whole history on um, what was going on between him and Coach or whatever it may be. Whether I don't think I had anything to do with it. I think he was already – on his way out the door, from my understanding. Right. So, so once I got there, we had uh, Antoine Walker, Derek Anderson, Tony Dell, Walter McCarty, Wayne Turner, Jeff Shepard, uh, Nazi Muhammad. So in total of that, my freshman team, we had about nine guys that ended up going pro off that one team. Yeah. Uh, imagine what the games were like and the practice was like. And, and that's, that's something that I was drawn to because I knew I would, I would get, get that competition. competition. I knew I would have somebody that was there better, better than me that could push me to where I needed to be. You get to take it off um, so, each year. Yeah. Like you said, dating back and you check your history, you get to go up yeah. each, another notch each year, man. So when the cream rises to the top, you're you're a part of that cream that's rising every yeah. single time. So yeah. and you and you knew that coming into coming into the situation. So tell me, tell me, take me through a, a couple of them practices, man. Like, um, cause y'all won the national championship your freshman year coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And and people that are that have been privileged to play college sports or any team sports, you know what goes into being able to win a championship. You know what I mean? The grit from the beginning of the preseason, and we all know if we follow basketball, Patino's a different guy. He's wired different. You know what uh-huh. I mean? You can hear the stories from. Him, um, I, I had a friend of mine, take on Dean to play for him at Louisville Reese Games, a uh, couple yeah, guys, yeah. you know what I mean? So I know some of the stories, so give me a little insight of how that preseason was. Cause Coach Smith don't slack in the preseason either. It's, yeah, it's, right. it's some competition that you thrown out there, and you show me why you ought to deserve to be playing. Right. Talk about Coach right. Patino and your, your, you walking into Kentucky. Man, I tell you, when I first got on campus, of course, you know, you got college rules where uh, in the beginning, it's only the players, coaches came in. And that time right there was probably the most important time because I got a chance to see guys at their true element. 
You know, I get to see Antoine Walker really, really get down. I get to see Tony Dell really get down. Derek Anderson. You know, Wayne, Wayne Turner, Turner. Nobody, nobody can stop him one-on-one, on one. Right. you know. Right. So, so I started, started seeing these different things, like, man, everybody, everybody can play. Can play. Mm-hmm. Now, now, what's, what's going to happen when the season, season starts and coach gets us? Yeah. And yeah. once coach gets us, then, then it's, it's a whole different ball game. game. You, you know, know, you go through the you go through the whole conditioning part, but everybody trying to figure out, how am I going to get my minutes? How, how, how is this, this going to work with so many talented guys, guys on the team? team. But, but, but the team figured out a way, way to make everybody, everybody happy. But, but we, we had, had enough guys where we had a 10-man rotation. rotation. We, we just, just rotate in. in. Time, time keeps out. out. You know, so, so anytime you got a chance to play, you know you had, you had a certain amount of time, so you wanted to go ahead and get it in. You had to prove yourself and practice it in the game because you don't know when you're going back in. So that was the competitive nature that everybody had to – had, had to get with, with at, at that, that time. time. You know, especially, especially in practice. practice. The practices practice were harder than the games. games. Right. For us. Very, very hard. Because our second, second group was, was, was a pretty, pretty nice, nice group. group. Without a doubt. <laughs> our second group went, went to the national, national championship, championship the next year. year. So it, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was tough, man. It was, it was tough. tough. Yeah. So you talk about that. Going through that season, did you all automatically know? Um, I know for sure Coach Patino is a guy that keep you down to earth. Um, you think you're doing something, he snatched you back real quick, he put you on that treadmill or whatever it may be in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. but, uh, did y'all know going through that season, man, everybody thinks national championship. Mm-hmm. But could y'all see national championship going through that season, the way you guys were dominating? Yeah, yeah that's all we heard was about, about national, national championship, championship, but, but – we, we knew it was going to take, take some adjustments, adjustments you know, because at the beginning of the year, we had, we made a lot of adjustments. So in the beginning of the year, I started the first 11 games. games. Right. Then he, he wanted to bring me off the bench. bench. During, During that time, Tony, Tony Dell was playing, playing the one. one. Uh-huh. But the, the team, team was better, better with him scoring playing the two. So we made some adjustments, and everything started clicking from there. Like, it was it was the best thing, especially for me as an individual. Now I get to go against the second string. I was going against the top guys. Now... Okay, okay, I can go against the second string. string. This, this should be a lot better, better than, now, you know. So, uh, and it ended, ended up working out. You know, it's just a matter of once you get your opportunity, are you, you going to make the best effort, effort when you get it? You know, know when the opportunity comes, come, are you going to take advantage of it? And, uh, and it worked out. So, slowly but surely, things started clicking for us towards the end of the year. Okay, so you get ready to go into the NCAA tournament. National Championship aspirations is very close. You can taste it, you can sense it. It's right around the corner. Y'all lost how many games they go? Uh, one, two. We lost two, two games, games two games. Two games that year. Um, went on to win the national championship. Leading up to it, to that final four. Um, did you did you ever think that maybe something could go wrong, or y'all were dialed in and it was on? Well. And and I, I got to give a shout-out to my boy Dante, Dante on, 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 on this. this but, but SEC championship, championship we, we lost to Mississippi State. State. Mm-hmm. And we, we had rolled through the SEC regular season undefeated. Right. And we ended up getting beat by Mississippi State in the SEC championship. That was, that was the loss we needed going right, right into the tournament. Because, because we was blowing everybody out and we got comfortable. And, and I, I think, think that, that loss actually helped us. Once, Once we got, got to the tournament, now we're more focused than ever. Because now we know we can be beat. beat. We, we went, went so low without losing, we just, just got accustomed to it. Mm-hmm. So, so once the tournament, tournament started, started, man, everybody was focused. We was on a mission. You know, and everybody, everybody was ready. So that was a, that was a key going into the tournament. Just that loss. Just to have that one loss underneath our belt. That second loss of the year underneath our belt. And that's what I wanted to touch on. Like, it's always something throughout the season that, Make you recalibrate everything. Make you be like, "Hold on, man. We we got to be on. We got to be on top of our game." So it's a different feeling when, um, you know, you make it to be a pro, most definitely. But you become a business yourself. With this as a team game, with the hoopla that surrounded the NCAA tournament, the the magnitude of it isn't another feeling like that. Do you think, as far as that Final Four? national championship run touch on that for a minute because i always explain to kids man to me there's no greater time um as a team sport than playing in college basketball college sports period you know what i mean because you kind of you kind of have that 
that adulthood right there around the corner. You know, it's a lot of independence. You know, there's other guys you depended on, not just yourself, as far as sculpting the team. Kind of like it was for your Oak Hill, that melting pot. Getting everybody to come together like that. Dive in on that for me just a little bit. Man, well, you know, once, once you hit the tournament, tournament it's already a different feeling. Right? The Final, Final Four is a whole nother level. level. Um, on, 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 well, well, one, you only have four teams left. left. So everybody, everybody is watching, watching those four teams. Four teams. Everybody, everybody in the country, country especially, you know, college, college fans, everybody's, everybody's watching those four, four teams. teams. Right. And, and for us, it's, it's like no mistakes. mistakes. The, the, the least amount of mistakes that you can make in the game, you can probably win. You know, you know, and, and it, it really, really comes down, down to coaching. coaching. It really it comes down, down to everybody being on one accord. Everybody, everybody playing, playing their role. For, for us, it was special because in the, the final, final four, we had a chance to uh, redeem, redeem myself, myself because we played, played UMass, UMass, and UMass beat us early in the year. So we was hyped for this. Right. We were ready because we wanted payback. So we was definitely more focused because they beat us. We, we got to get this get back, back now. So, uh, and, and we came out, we played hard, everybody, everybody played their role, and we, we ended up winning. winning. Now, the, the thing about that is, we were already looking because Mississippi State, State was in the final four. four. They, they had, had to play Syracuse, so we thinking, we might, might get Mississippi State, State too. Now. Yeah. You, you know, know. But, but Syracuse ended up beating them, so now we got Syracuse in the national championship, and... But, but they, they have, have a top player, player. And John Wallace, Wallace, so we, we knew our work was going to be cut out for us. So just that excitement alone of getting revenge, everybody's watching, everybody back home is watching because it's only four teams now. Yeah. So now, not, not only you got to play for your team, team but everybody, everybody back home, home like, okay, my boy, he, he in the final four now. now. So, we, you know, you know he, he got to get down now. now. So that's basically what it was. Hey, man, I remember, man, I remember being in school and they, and they, 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 that's all they were talking about, man. That Ron Mercer, Ron Mercer, Ron Mercer, the Final Four, dude. I was like, golly, that's that's a cold feeling, man. Like everybody talking about it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, and that was that was much much deserved, man. So tell me a little bit before we talk about the championship. Tell me a little about a little bit about Derek Anderson. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Again, just just weigh in on him a little bit. Antoine Walker, what it was like playing with playing with those guys, man, because. Twan was a different guy. Twan a different guy, man. Coming from Chicago, Twan talked all the time. Man. Even on the court, he just talked. But when it's time to play, man, that's the guy you want on your side. Because you know he's ready to play. It don't matter what. It don't matter if you're up 20 and you're down 20. Twan going to talk and he's going to be ready to play. So that's the only thing about him. Guys just hated him in practice because... And, and we, we couldn't stop, stop him. You know, you know what I mean? Like, like we, if, if he, he wanted, wanted to post and he, he wanted to go outside and he had handles, man, you, you, you couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't stop, stop him, man. He backed it up. Yeah. Derrick Anderson, man, man he, he was a really good teammate. Uh, I learned a lot from Derrick because, because we were similar, similar players. players. Right. He, he was, was a little older and smarter, so his defense and knowing where the ball was going to be, his anticipation of the ball, man, was great. So he was a mentor, even though that was like one of my best friends. He's more of a mentor. During, during that, that time. time. So I learned, I learned a lot from him. him. Even, Even when he, he got hurt during um, that, that last year, his senior year, year he, he was, was telling me what to do from the bench. He was showing me different stuff that he was seeing. And I'd go in the game and do it. He'd be like, that worked. You know what I mean? So, man, he helped out a lot. Both of those guys are great guys. That's what's up. So y'all win the national championship. Tell me what that feeling is like coming back to the school. You get off the bus. Big. First of all, Big Blue Nation is – Bananas right now. It's going off. You know what I mean? Yeah. You get back, y'all come off that bus. What's the feeling like? Man, man it, it was great, great man. man. It, it was, was uh, especially, especially in Kentucky, Kentucky cause they, they celebrate everything. everything. Anything basketball, basketball you know, they, they, they celebrate. Fans, fans come out to everything. everything. So, so to, to finally look, look back to where we started uh -huh. at, at the beginning of the season, season. Look, look at all the different transitions that everybody went through. Me personally, Me personally, it was great, great because, because and this, this is, is a lesson, lesson for the kids, uh, uh, anybody, anybody young, um, coming, coming off the bench. Because what people need to realize is I started the first 11, 12 games, coach, coach made me come, come off the bench because it was better for the team. team. And, and I didn't understand that at the time. time. And, and coach says, Ron, your opportunity is going to come. And me, and me being, being young, young, I'm like, like yeah, yeah, right, we You know, we I'm waiting all the year. Championship game comes, guys get in foul trouble, my opportunity to come. I have a career high in the championship game that I've done all year long 
And, and I, I thought, thought back. back. Coach, Coach was right. right. Mm-hmm. Coach, Coach said, man, man time, time is going to come. come. Be, be ready, ready when the time, time comes. comes. And it just so happened my time coming in the championship game, game to help my team win the national championship. championship. So, so for, for the kids, kids out there, man, when, when, when you're you playing and things, things are not going your way, your way and you're not getting the minutes, you think, think you deserve, deserve but you're not starting, starting. Uh-huh. Hey, hey, man, you, you got to work hard in the meantime. When your opportunity comes, you never know when it's going to happen. It's not going to happen when you want it to happen. When it does, when an opportunity presents itself, you make sure you're ready. Yeah. Mentally, mentally, physically, physically ready. ready because, because you never know when it's going to happen. So that's a lesson for the kids, kids on that. that. But for far as the championship game, game is just to see how hard everybody worked, worked at the beginning of the year to the end of the year. Coach did his first national championship. And then it became motivation to try to do it again the next year. So it was great. Great feeling. And off of that, you were inducted to Kentucky Kentucky Hall of Fame, basketball Hall of Fame. Yeah, well, salute, yeah, salute to that. That's big time, man. Especially the as rich of a, tra- a tradition and the history that you guys have at, at Kentucky, man. To be named and, and, and your name chiseled on, chiseled in on in the end of that Hall of Fame, and that's big time, man. Coming from yeah. where you came from to getting all the way up there, that's that's a lot of things for people to look forward to. I mean, look up to um, yeah. while they're playing. So you get that championship. What's your, what's your thoughts? I know uh, y'all. First of all, y'all got y'all really got an NBA team. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. One through yeah. ten. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, what's your thoughts coming off of that championship? Are you are you thinking, man, this might be lead time, or what, what? What was your thought process going into that? No, no I, I, I actually wasn't. I, I knew from, from having, having the game, game that, that I had. had now, now I knew the pressure, pressure was on me. me. I, I went, went from. from you know, you know, Tony, Tony Dell and, and, and Antoine, Antoine Walker, they, they have no the pressure on them. them. Right. Now, now the pressure shifts, shifts to me and their ends. Ends. Mm-hmm. So, so now, now I know, okay, now, now I really got to work hard. Because now, now everything is on my shoulders now. now. So, um, and, and I'm already, already getting the attention now at the beginning of my software year of the Pro Scouts. So you're seeing the Pro Scouts on them. I'm um, top, top two, three, four, four somewhere in there throughout the whole year. So I'm like, okay, the pressure's here. So... I really, really got to perform. I really, really got to push, push this team and, and, um, and, and do what I got to do to try to win the national championship. championship. But, but then Derek Anderson, Anderson tears, tears his knee. Right. So, so now it's, 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 it's me as far as the main guy, guy but we still, still got a lot of great guys, guys around. around. A lot, a lot of, of you know, guys, guys that's been part, part of that championship the year before. So now we got to figure out a way, but that pressure is really on me now. Yeah. It's a bold and, and, and it's the difference between, between a, you know, another, another school type, type pressure. pressure. But that, that pressure in Kentucky is a whole nother level. level. Yeah. Cause they, they expect you to win. win. They, they don't matter what. They, they expect you to win. So this, this, this monkey here is, was, uh, it's heavy. It's heavy. It was on, it was on my neck the whole year. And that's a silver back on the back now. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going through that, leading up to where D.A. got hurt. Um. Y'all was sharing. Y'all, y'all, y'all was sharing. You know what I mean? Y'all going back and forth. It's a great combo. Like, it's it's phenomenal to watch. As a kid growing up, looking at that man, like, that was, that was special to watch. So now, D.A. gets hurt, and it shifted to you. Did you put more pressure on yourself? I know from the outside world, it's pressure, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. Did you put pressure on yourself? How did you adjust to that to get back comfortable to, to just being you? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I definitely put a lot of pressure on myself because I felt like once DA got hurt, I went into a slump. Right. I don't know if it was because I was trying hard, it was just that time where you just hit a slump during the season. Uh, and then Coach had to sit everybody down and say, hey, man, we can't replace D. One person can't replace DA. Everybody has to fill this role and take on a more responsibility. Um, and that's, and that's basically, basically kind of what we did. You know, we, we, had we had to do that, that but I knew I had to score buckets, buckets for, for us to, you know, uh, either, either have a chance or uh, to, to win the game. The game. You know, and, and everybody, everybody else contributed and did their part. But I knew I, knew I had to be the main score. score. Mm-hmm. Well, before I let you get out of here, Merce, man, I, 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 it's a lot more we can touch on, but that's going to be for a whole, whole different okay. avenue. You know what I mean? That, that's going to be where right. the cheering stops, and we're going to talk about transitioning from pro. So back to the okay. regular world, this, that, and the other. But did you think um, when y'all won the national championship, championship in what, 94, 95? 95, 96. 96. So y'all won the national championship. Did you know the groundwork was being laid at that time? Like Kentucky, like I said, has a rich tradition. 
But mm -hmm. when y'all won the national championship with Coach Patino, some things changed. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all groundwork was totally different. I know when I when I was getting ready to come to Tennessee, it was automatically let's get to the tournament. You know what I mean? I think it shifted. Yeah, yeah. It shifted when we looked at Kentucky. It was man, Kentucky probably gonna win that championship. You know what I mean? They're gonna be yeah, at least yeah. in the final four. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Tell me, tell me did, when you look back on it, did you know the groundwork was being laid and do you see the impact that y'all left on the university? Oh, oh no, no doubt. I, no, no doubt. doubt. That, that class, class coming, coming in was, was the probably legit, legit national, national championship, championship team, team that everybody, everybody expected. expected. Like, like, you know what? what? Nothing, nothing less. less. Nothing, nothing less with that team. team. Uh, and, and that, that set the groundwork for the next, next year. year. Uh -huh. so, so, I mean, I mean you, you coming in the pressure right, right away. Right away. And we all knew it. It was just a matter of. How, how is this, this how, how is everything, everything going to work? work? Yeah, and the Patino Patino was that mastermind, man, man but he, he made he made, he made it work. work. I, don't I don't know how he did it, but all, all the equals that we had, with all, all the everybody, everybody had having super talent, talent but, but everybody, everybody couldn't show their talent, talent once. You would see it every now and then, and it came to play when you had certain games when guys was off, and then this guy takes over. But I don't know how he was able to do that and keep everybody happy, sharing the ball. And, and to, to have, have one goal, and that's to win a national championship. So if you figured out a way, and, uh, and guys, guys did it, man. So it, it, it laid the groundwork. Definitely, definitely laid the groundwork from that year on. Even up to this point now, it's a certain standard that you got to have at Kentucky. Kentucky. People, People expect you to win. They expect you national championship. They don't look at SEC tournament championships. They don't look at Final Four. They look at national championships each year. That's the goal. And the funny thing is, man, even guys that go to other schools, like, I'm going to be honest, like, we kind of look at it like, Kentucky, Kentucky going to be there. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. that's me coming from somebody that bleed orange, but I, yeah. it, it's just facts are facts. You know what I mean? So, uh, man, we appreciate you. I appreciate you coming in the boom boom room. Uh, we're going we gonna to let you get back to your day. But, man, look forward to talking to you soon. We appreciate it. Your, um, anything you want to leave for the kids here in the city, or, or kids that are that may be watching, parents that may be watching, um, anything you want, any little gym you want to drop and leave for them? Man, man I, I just tell the kids, kids man, um, if, you if you have, have a passion, passion man, man, just, just follow your, your passion. passion. Whether, Whether it's basketball, basketball baseball, 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 they, they want, want them to do a dream, dream that they, they have. And sometimes, and sometimes parents, parents man, just got to let their kids, kids be kids. Because at, at the end, end of the day, they are kids. kids. Mm -hmm. And, and when, when it comes, comes to a certain point, point they, they want to put in the effort, effort they're they going to do it. You should, you should never have to tell your kid, kid um, to, get to get up to do this and do that. They have a passion for it. They're going to want to do it if they want to be good. If they want to be great. And at the end of the day, man, when you're playing sports, just, just go out and work, work hard. Because the, the end of the, the end end goal is, is to, to, to go to college and get an education. A free, a free education. education. All, All this pro, pro stuff everybody, everybody want to do, that's good to have in your mind, mind but at the, the end, end of the day, day it's different, different levels. Level. You, you got to get to college first. first. Gotcha. You got to get to college first. first. I mean, why you, why you work working towards that? that? Why not work on your game to get a free scholarship? Because, because I knew I, knew I, I couldn't, couldn't pay to go to college. college. I'm going to tell you right now. now if, if I didn't, I didn't have a scholarship, scholarship I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't I wouldn't have went. I wouldn't have went to college. I'm going to raise my hand on that one, brother. <laughs> you, you guys have an opportunity now. now. You got, you got more, more access to gyms, gyms than, than, than we did. did. I played on concrete. So there's no excuse not to get in the gym or get with one of your coaches or whatever it may be and just work on your game, man, because they're giving out scholarships out here. It don't matter if it's Division One, Division Two, It don't matter. It's free. And I think that's key. Free education, education, go get it. That, 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 that's, that's my advice right, right there. Get, get all, all the other stuff. stuff. Free, Free education. education. That's the biggest line, man. We appreciate you, man. Salute, man. Cashville legend, Ron Mercer in the Boom Boom Room with us. And we, I'm going to get you one of these shirts, Mercer. So you yeah, I'm going to wear one, one next time. time. <laughs> 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 Say no more. I appreciate it, man. All right. All love. Good, appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yo, people. That was Ron Mercer, man. Salute to him for coming through to the Boom Boom Room. I think Mercer touched on a key, key point, man. Always keep it focused on what the big picture is. You know what I mean? And, and that is, kids, man, the goal is to get school paid for. Like you just heard from a, a NBA vet. 
You know what I mean? All American, all that, all that national champion, all that in the bull. But the main thing is to get school paid for. You keep that in in your goal in the forefront. And things gonna work out, man. Keep your head down, work hard. And you heard it, man. Like, um, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, man. Much, much appreciation to Mercer for coming through. It's difficult to get him on camera talking. So I, I take that as a big accomplishment, man. Big, big accomplishment. Also, um, the shirts. Like I just told Mercer, shirts will be out soon, man. Y'all hold on. Y'all make sure you go get you the Boom Boom Room shirt. You know what I mean? I'm gonna have a place where you can order them. Boom Boom Room with Ron Slay. That's going to be big time. Make sure you go subscribe. Subscribe right here to the YouTube channel. Ron Slay. Type in Ron Slay on YouTube. Go subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate the love. Really appreciate the support. Um, make sure you do that, man. That, that, that's vital. You know what I mean? We don't want to be doing this for nothing, but I want to keep on continuing to bring you good content. So, people, stay posted. It's all love. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate Mercer, Ron Mercer, for coming through to the Boom Boom Room. Salute. That's it. We'll see y'all next time.